please welcome the incredible Dan Martell. Hey, babes, what's up? What's up? She's my peanut. I'm his peanut. So what's cool is this is episode 300. This is so cool. I'm so proud of you. This is amazing. You've been on the 100th, the 200th, the 300th episode. Cool. I saved this for you. All right. And then the 400s and 500s. <laughs> the 500. The 500th, the thousandth. Yeah. yeah. That was a goal. I remember when I first started the show, you, I asked you to be a guest. And you said, I'll uh, get to 100 episodes and I'll consider it. Out of love. People hear that and they're like, man, you're so strict. Like, but the truth is I had to do it out of integrity because I said that to probably 200 people. Yeah. A lot of people launch podcasts, as you know. I am Very also few your get wife. Past. I know. But I don't know, listeners. Do you think that I get off? Yeah, get out a jail free card for some of no, these things? <laughs> no. no. Anyways, but yeah, most people, I think, what is it? Seven pod that they publish, the average podcast? Uh, the last seven. time I checked, the most podcasts don't survive past eight episodes. Eight episodes. Yep. So I launched with nine just to defy the odds. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And then we're here now. We've grown immensely this year. We were talking about this this morning. I said, what are we going to talk about today? How much have you grown? Yeah. I listed off like five massive things in our lives that are just completely different a year later. So yeah. I was like, pick. But you know what the listeners love to hear the most? They love the behind the scenes. Cool. They love to know how we operate. They love to know how we parent our styles, all that stuff. But I have got a couple questions I'm going to just kick things off with. Cool. What do you love the most about me? Your smile. I'm just joking. No, I want <laughs> like give me some, give me a second. Yeah, a lot okay, of stuff. Okay. One, your style. You have an incredible sense of design. Like next yeah. level. I'm blind to it. I see you do it. It is so elegant, effortless, and incredible. Like from the house stuff to the way you dress to your personal brand, that's impressive. Um, you get back up every time. Like every time you get knocked down, I see you get back up. And sometimes I'm like, oh, is she gonna lay there for a second? And <laughs> and you don't you don't skip a beat. It's actually really cool. I coach a lot of men, and unfortunately, some of them are in marriages where they feel like they're the ones driving all the time and. Um, I've never felt that with you. So it's How's just that tree feeling on your shoulder. right now. I leave it there. It's actually a, my comfort blanket. When I do pods, it always stabs me in the shoulder for those <laughs> my, listening. I have, a, I have a fern right on my right well, shoulder. I appreciate that. And I will say that you have been a massive influence in me getting back up. Cool. Yeah. A story that comes to mind was when my previous business partner left and I was so devastated by that because we were, supposedly good friends and running this business 50 50 and I kind of dragged my heels for a week and then one day you came up to me you're like peanut listen <laughs> listen listen <laughs> listen Linda <laughs> I understand you're upset I've heard the story what day are you going to stop talking about this and um I was like how dare you give me an expiration date for telling you about how I feel and I said Tuesday at noon I don't even remember what day it was and then I realized I need to vent to somebody else because you've heard it all. And I stopped talking about it to you. So and you just found other people. So I just found <laughs> other people. I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. No, but it was a great reminder that do I really need to be circling around the story over and over again? How many times do I do this with things in my life? Mm -hmm. How many times do we all do this with certain things in our lives? Mm -hmm. um, with this podcast, there were moments when I'm like, I'm done. This is self-funded I don't know why I'm doing this. Every single time I ask that question, I get a DM. Renee, this episode changed my life. Yeah. Renee, this. Renee, that. And then what happened this morning? Yeah, tell everybody. This is totally God. That was working. huge. So this morning, yesterday I got a, a text from my friend Jackie Service. She also has a podcast called The Jackie Service Show. Go check it out. She's awesome. She's like, yo, Renee, this is cute. And it was a screenshot of her podcast podcast. Um, whatever shows rankings yeah. rankings and i thought it was just her list and i was like oh that's cute because she's like look at you're above dan <laughs> and i was like i don't know if that was because she just listened to my show or whatever then i was like wait a second i checked the chartable charts this morning and it said i fell out of ranking in italy and spain but i was number 10 in canada for entrepreneurship i was like there's got to be a glitch this has got to be broken there's no way i can all of a sudden just be 10 
Sure enough, I went on and checked it out, and I was right behind Cody Sanchez and above you. Crazy. I know. Hey, anytime know. you want to be on top, <laughs> go nuts. <laughs> you brought it up. I was like, I no, can't believe you're going to say it. No. I'm going to say it. I mean, ahead of you in the right. Anyway. Uh, where place? So <laughs> this is just a reminder that if you and all my friends said, like, it's about the consistency. It doesn't have to be perfect. Most days we show up. We don't know what the heck we're doing. Parenting. <laughs> but anyway. Um, I'm not done giving you flowers. Though. I oh. let you go on your little okay. tangent. But um, so your style, your determination. The way you love your kids is awesome. Like, holy moly. Noah gets away with murder sometimes. Because, like, yes, you let him sit on you when it's absolutely uncomfortable. You, yeah. He comes in the room. He does his little his little letters he slides under oh, the door. So oh, my gosh. He's like, my mom, I'm mad at you. <laughs> like, yeah. or I'm mad at Dita. I, blah, blah, blah. Don't come get me. Or, I mean, this. have you collected all those notes? All of them. I have oh, there's, there's got to be 100 plus. I don't know. But I've... I've I've so cute i'm um, just yeah and just how you always fight for the family like i'm very try to keep everything working but sometimes i'm not as um i don't see things the same way and i just love that about you yeah i see things yeah i see everything yeah and you feel you're like a feeler you're I'm an feeling. empath i should have been like an fbi agent because i see things yeah you know those games you play where it's like what changed in the room yeah I know exactly what changed in the room. Yeah, that's why you do so good at you like um, move a pillow. I know. <laughs> yeah, what's that thing we do in when we go escape rooms? Yeah, escape rooms. That's why you love escape rooms? Oh, yeah, I love them. Anyway, are you done? What giving is you it? flowers? Giving me flowers? Okay, for now. Okay. So let's talk about how about some family balance stuff. Okay. How do you navigate balancing family life with demands of? your business as well as our relationship? Well, I mean, I would say I do my best and I take the input and I adjust. So I just, I'm a big fan of like creating structures, right? So um, I think a while ago we were talking about like how much time am I away per month, right? Cause like, if not, like you, the requests come in every day, I could be literally traveling the world at this point. So. I think back in the day, it was 10 days a month. Remember when we were doing that? Okay. It's like, Max, yeah, it was a while ago. We put that structure in place. It's definitely less now. I don't like being away that much. Uh, or even a change is bringing you guys with me or bringing one of the kids with me, which has been a real blessing. But I just kind of look at the rhythm for the week, right? And because we have our weekly meeting, we're always kind of adjusting the calendars, number one. It's like, what are we doing? We always plan the weekend. We always plan the week. We try to have dinner together almost every night. You've got your night off on Mondays. I've got my night off on Tuesdays. We've got, you know, family days or or one on one time with the kids and all this stuff. So I like, I'm I'm just a big fan of like putting it in the calendar and like feeling how does that work? Because I don't also believe in balance. I believe in integration and harmony. I believe that. You know, there's seasons in our life where if you're like, hey, I'm starting this new project and it's going to require me to work late for the next three weeks, I'd be like, game on. I got you. I'll take care of the kids, you know, talk to the kids. They might have a problem with that. But I don't know. I just I think like oftentimes there's three things I always look at. If I'm going to say yes to something or change something, does it impact my business fundamentals? Right. Because I think that if you don't, there's self-sabotage there. Two is commitment to others. That's that's this, right? Whereas I've made a commitment to you. I'm going to be home at dinner every night for 6 o'clock. Uh, we have our time after I put the kids to bed. The, like, there's there's structure around it. So it's not like, I thought you were supposed to. Well, I thought, you know, it's like, who is picking up the kid? You know, like that kind of the stuff. Kid. <laughs> yeah. And the third is success habits, right? Like, our whole household knows Renee is a better person when she does CrossFit. So we need to prioritize that for her. We need to pick up after ourselves so she doesn't, you know, is late for anything. So, like, those to me are even my personal success habits is I know what I need to do to keep in rhythm. And before I say yes to anything, I just revisit those and make sure I renegotiate anything that has to happen. I mean, when I remember when I started Martel Media, I was like, here's the vision. I'm going all in. Mm -hmm. I'm going from amateur to pro. This is what it's going to require what do you need from me to make that happen? And like, one of the things was you can't do this in our house. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's okay. That's a big ask, but 
we solved the problem. We got this studio this and it's been the a year now, right? Yeah. September 1st was a year. Isn't that crazy it what we've done in is, a year? So today was actually my first day working in studio. Yeah. Yeah. You wanted to start working <laughs> amongst all the teams. So a bunch of welcome boys. day no. one. <laughs> um, what a cool spot it is, but that also highlights the boundaries that we both have and you appreciate too. hundred percent. I mean, I would, I didn't grow up eating dinner every night with my family. No. It was literally come in, grab some food, head back out. I had two brothers and a sister. My dad was never like hardly home. Mom raised us kind of. So yeah, I love the boundaries and I, I, I love, I love also like, I know that people watch, obviously I have a couple million people on the internet, but it's the challenge of it is also fun. Like I, I love how hard it can be trying to be world-class in the business stuff and also be an incredible husband to you and also be an incredible father and also be a great friend. Like that is not, that is actually really, really, really hard. Mm -hmm. But I know if I'm willing to figure it out and go first and hire the experts and figure out all the, the ways and then teach it to other people like that, that's what my life is meant for. Like I'm here to do the work to then teach other people. And it's why I think you're, podcast does so well because you are inherently somebody that shines your light incredibly bright and people are like impressed yeah. and then you tell them you're like here's how our weekly meetings go and here's how you know that. yeah of so, course they love it because it's 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 so freaking hard it is hard yes I but it's supposed to be because if it was easy everybody would have it but if you want something you spectacular out of it it's just the whole idea of having an extraordinary life requires the extra Mm. And most people are like, oh, why is it so hard? It's like, it's supposed to be hard. Yeah. It means and are most you people. To do it? Yes. So let's talk about hard this year. You both leveled up <laughs> massively. What happened with you? I mean, there was a lot of stuff. The book, my book, Buy Back Your Time, came out last year in January and it kind of surprised me. Like, I know we did a lot of work on the promotion. But the feedback and the amount of people that read it and then Wall Street Journal bestseller and then top podcast requests and media stuff. And it just got to a point, I think. So January when it came out, April is when I started really thinking about it. Um, I was doing a podcast tour. So I'd go to these other places and the sets really impressed me and the dedication to the brand, the personal brand really impressed me. And like I was in Vegas, I just did Bradley's, Ryan Pineda's, and um, we were having dinner with Alex and Layla Hermosi. And I remember I was sitting in front of Alex and I just said, sell me on this idea. Like I've always done social media, right? Mm -hmm. But to watch what he did, and I'd been friends with him for four or five years at that point, um, especially, and what people don't know this is, maybe you do, he also used to talk crap about it. Like he, he didn't want to, he was like, I don't want to ever do that. <laughs> like I do ads to the degree I need to do ads, but this whole idea of like becoming a person on the internet was not something. And he's crushed it too. No, no. He's like, he's at the top of the top. Yeah. Right. And Crazy. so that's what changes just being around other people. And then, and then just making a decision that I just felt like I was lying to myself. Like mm. I just knew I was capable of more. I was phoning it in. I wasn't being serious about it. I looked at two things. My bank account, how much money was I putting towards this? At the time, $5,000 a month, right? Which is a lot. It's not nothing. But it was a marketing expense. It wasn't a decision to go all in. And then my calendar. My calendar was minimal. Like, I would brag to people, oh, yeah, I shoot all my YouTube videos in two days for four months. Like, stupid. Like, there was no reps and iteration and, like, better. Like, it was, there was no, like, deciding to be the best in the world at it. It was just I was doing marketing. So what change is just a decision from going from amateur to pro. How did you think about approaching me in this? Like, what was the thoughts in your mind? You're growing. Oh, gosh. What does Renee think? Oh, there was just so much. I mean, think about this. I'm like going, OK, I'm I'm going to go put my whole life on display. Renee and the boys are my life which requires them to be available to be part of that. Cause if not, that would be really tough for me. Cause I'm just not one, you know, like I can't separate them. It's like, it's who I am. And, and I wanted you guys involved anyways. Like I wanted you to come with me on these trips and be part of the, you know, mm -hmm. just be part of it, see it, show the boys. And yeah, I was, I was worried because I knew there's like really logical 
concerns like privacy, security. Um, you know, what if you get canceled because something you said five years ago gets picked up and today in today's society, it's not acceptable. Yeah, acceptable, right? Those are all valid concerns. So it was just kind of like, you know, we just wrote them down and we worked through them, right? Like, how do we deal with our personal security? And ter it turns out the good news is there's people that solve all these problems. These are all solvable yeah. problems. I'm not the first person <laughs> in the world that's ever decided to do this. And, and the upside way, way, way surpasses the downside. Okay. Yeah. For me, watching you grow, I know there's a lot of times you think, and you'll even say, I don't feel like you're supporting me. But I feel like I'm one of your biggest cheerleaders, if not the biggest cheerleader. I remember when you were, your Instagram account just started growing and I saw what you and Sam, the team were doing. I was like refreshing. I was like, oh my God, you're at 400. You're at 450. You're over 500,000 followers. It was crazy what you did. <laughs> you're funny because you like were like, you have more than this person and more than this person. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I zero look at oh, me I did. compared to, I, I know you were telling me the play by play. <laughs> and uh, that's cute. No, and I mean, I don't, I, if I've ever said that, I don't think you support me. I apologize because that's definitely not, the essence i think sometimes i feel like you're make it, it feels like it's you're making it harder than it has to be you have kids and a wife it i know ain't gonna be easy no it's not and i asked for it and i'm totally okay with it and i think it's all part of the journey i mean okay. I, I tell people all the time the world will show you where you're not free so anytime i felt like oh now i'm like oh that's my work to do so there you go yeah, yeah. um okay parenting what is what have so Max and Noah, coolest, so different boys? Yeah. Recently, what are some of the biggest lessons they've taught you, and how have you applied that to your to your life as an entrepreneur? Yeah, I mean, so you know, Noah's eleven now, Max is twelve. There's like three birthdays in our house in four weeks. It's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> I think like it's interesting because they're just so different right even though they're close in age they're still quite different like max is a lot older than no Noah. Noah's still like a kid ish a kid, yeah. yeah whereas max is like a tween like he's teenager yeah and i mean the big thing they both show me is just how capable they are at such a young age mm. right and what's crazy about me for people that don't know about my background you know getting in trouble with the law and getting taken out of my home like that all started at 12. So imagine Max going through some of the stories you've heard about my life. It's just, it, yeah. it doesn't, uh, so that, that, even that part, like when I'm hanging out with him and I'm just thinking like, oh man, he's such a like innocent little boy. And I was just thinking like how I dealt with that and just how much craziness. So it's kind of interesting, kind of 25, 27 years after the fact. Um, One thing I've noticed too is it's also like a point of contention because sometimes this like buy back your time thing is just too much for me. Yeah, yeah, also, no, and it's it, it can be too much for sure. It goes it and where it kind of where I get my what is it you call a ceiling of complexity yeah. in this is that because of how I was raised. So my childhood was great, and so I think, well, geez, if it was that good, then isn't this the way that it should be? And it's hard for me to get away from that. But anyway, what you do so well with the boys is you you say you you tell them that they need to go and do the thing like the laundry and the garbage and take it out meanwhile i'm the one that feels inclined to help them for many reasons one being i don't think i'm a good mother if somebody else is doing the work that is expected of me and then i default back to thinking my first days of college i did not know how to use a washing machine at 18 years old i was the only girl in my dorm that did not know how to do it because my mom did everything for me so there's part of it that sucks as a child that they got to doing all these things. But this morning is a perfect example of me needing to get out of the house, rushing to get out earlier than normal. And I didn't even have to riff off the things that was expected of them. They were working together. Noah Max is like, I need to bring the garbage out. Noah, come and help me. They would do it. Make the dog go to the bathroom, all these things. And I know that you had a massive influence on that because you are the one that told them, that they need to do those things. <laughs> yeah, like I'm so it's it's kind of funny because a few things for everybody listening. Um, my my hallucination is this: most moms don't think they're great at the mom stuff. No, they think they're doing bad. 
most dads think they're the best dads in the world. Mm -hmm. I know I, I do. I'm just like, I think I'm the best dad in the world. Well, and here's why. They've actually done research on this, that kids' dopamine levels are at their highest when they're playing with dad or when they're being nurtured by their mother. So in a way, it's kind of like, dad got an easy job here. All they got to do is play. Yeah. And then mom's got to nurture. So what falls under nurturing is not just the cuddles, but it's like the making the lunches, making sure taking they have their laundry, all that stuff. Yeah. I guess it's, it's interesting because like my responsibility, my the, the, the way I've always looked at it is my job is to raise capable, mm -hmm. you know, children at 17, 17, 18 to get out of my house. Okay. I love you, but get out of my house. I'm not your babysitter. I'm not like paying for anything. And you always joke. You're like, well, then I'm going with, I'm them. Going with them. I know, which is, which is fine. Like I just, I set that frame so that they no. they're paying attention, right? You've seen them. They've asked like, how much does the apartment cost? And like, oh, yeah. what does this cost? Like we teach them about the world because they know the world is coming mm -hmm. faster than they can imagine. Mm -hmm. And like, even in the mornings, like I on purpose, I've never, ever like people comments when they hear this, like I've never done these things for them. Not because I couldn't, not because I didn't want to, because I personally felt like if I do that, I'm, not, I'm robbing them from learning a skill. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time you're like, I think that's too much. And you may have been right. You, you're definitely probably right. But I will, I will say this. I think my rebuttal was pretty good where I said, do you want them having a wife going, what did your mom teach you? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I can't believe you don't do this or you don't know how to, or like there's no pride in this aspect. And that was just like the frame for me was, I want these men to be in a relationship and for that person to go, oh, thank gosh. It's just like the, you remember the first time we went to, uh, I think it was a first grade teacher conference and it's like the the day before the kids start school and we go sit in the little yep. desk and the parent, the teacher was like, and parents, please let your kids zip up their own bags, put, tie their own shoes because if you do it for them, I'm gonna have to do it for them and I don't wanna do that. <laughs> and I was just like, I like this teacher. So I think that's where I got kind of the beliefs is just, I just think they're capable and it doesn't take away from like, I love them. I just, I love them in the way that I love them. I don't have to, for me anyways, I don't have to do the stuff to show them that stuff. Okay. So can we have a tough conversation yeah. right now? So you are great at business. You're crushing it here and you come home and you're typically tired because you give it all here. And some days I feel like we're in your reserves, but the boys also see that. And they see me doing the things like cleaning up after dinner and all that stuff. What are you telling them about the situation? Because the dynamic is that the husband is the breadwinner, the wife is still at home doing all the things. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting because the fact that we have Betty in our home full time as well, our house manager, is, yeah, like also, tells the story of like hundred percent. Yeah. So maybe we need to have conversations with the boys. Yeah. Because there's, there's the perception like people it's, it's caught, not taught. Right. So like they're catching this. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I mean, like, let's be honest, whether I'm tired or not, I'm not jumping in the kitchen and cleaning. I've never done that ever. No. That's, and I, and I know like, listen, man, if you want your wife to be happy with you and some men are like, I remember when we went and hung out with Mike Brown, and he cleaned the kitchen. Let's just double click on that for one second. When we first started dating, you even said, I don't do these things. I've never done those things. I've never done those things. If that's going to be an issue, then this probably won't work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm very upfront with who I am with mm -hmm. people. And it doesn't mean that I don't want to get better. I mean, I do pick up after myself a lot more. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, <laughs> Well, I know well, my no. standards are so high. I know. That's I mean, <laughs> the other day I was like, who keeps stealing my spoon? Because <laughs> every time I'd go into the area to do something, yeah. I'd come back that you'd grab the spoon and I know. It. I have the thing for always having a clean sink. Which I, I, I got to work on that. And too. I absolutely love because like I, I'm also friends with, you know, guys that are married to a woman that isn't that way. And I go to their house and I'm like, oh gosh, what a pigsty. Yep. But you are the, the opposite. I know, which is, it's, it's a, it's a blessing. I had to learn to let go. Cause I remember like, and then I read a bunch of books. There's actually one book told me that like things in rooms speak to women. They like talk to them. Like, oh my God. When you, after you read that book, you were like, is that thing speaking to you? Right yeah. Yeah. Now? Like, is that cushion out of place speaking to you? And you're like, well, I don't like it. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. So you walk in a it's room amazing. and you're like, oh no, it's out of place. And you want to put it back and da, 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 da. And I'm See, just, I love having a clean and tidy house before I go to bed. Yeah. Cause there's one less thing to worry about when you wake up. 
in the morning. See, it's, so here's a conflicting challenge because I like having the thing set up the way I need it when I go back to it. So that's so why I, I like my couch the way I, I left it, it. But you are, yeah, are not a bachelor, dude. You're I not. know, but it's just like if nobody's coming over and it's just well, we us. We could set some parameters. But here's the cleaning up after you thing is interesting because you would keep your shake mug on the coffee table and the yeah, dog yeah, that, would that eat stuff the had mugs. to stop. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean this is like I'm not also oblivious to uh, this isn't smart. So, <laughs> um, and. I don't know. I also will get better over time. And so the idea of it being caught, not taught in terms of like gender roles in a house too. Yeah. What conversations do we need to be having with the boys? Uh, that's a great question. I haven't put any thinking into. Okay. Well, yeah. we'll just, we'll put a little dot. Asterix. Next, an asterisk next to that. Yeah. In the 400th episode, the 400th we'll episode will we'll let you know what we've come up with. Okay. Um, Before it's worth the gender role thing, I don't, I don't even agree with it. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't think, I think there's defaults in nature, like whatever you want to do. It's totally. just like, like on my team, what are you, what do you like to do? I like to do these things. Oh, that's good. Cause I hate doing those things. I like to do these things. Oh my gosh. Thank God. Cause I like to do, okay, cool. How about I do those things? You do those things and we all win. It's like, let's go win. That's kind of how, like, if I, I don't know if I enjoyed cleaning, I'm sure you'd let me clean. I actually don't mind it. So, what's But for example, like, imagine I asked you to deal with all the financial stuff. Ugh. So, okay, there you go. Yeah, but I wouldn't know what to do. I would uh, screw just like me. so bad. How many times have I cleaned up and you're like, well, oh, let no, me just do it, it myself. It can't be detrimental. It would be detrimental if you're like, just <laughs> deal with all these finances. I know, but like, how many times have I tried to clean up and you're just like, oh my God, you're doing it wrong. It is cute when it happens, though. Oh, yeah. Very cute. Like when the shake exploded in the master bedroom. Okay, so the story... We have in our in our master um, bathroom upstairs. It's all white, white towels, white rug, white everything. White everything. It's literally a white. And I don't room. know why this was a thing, but you were like in a rush. And oh, you I was had in a, a rush. A one greens, and you you went to go and shake it as you were walking into, into the, shower, the shower next to a rack of white towels. Yeah. And the whole top came off. And it, it didn't. Just I went didn't click it. Sploosh, everywhere. And then I'm standing in there. You turn to you, me and you're like. Like you thought you were going to die. I thought you were going to turn around and kick me with all your might, um, <laughs> which would have been abnormal because I've never seen you do that. But I thought it. Or I was looking at your hands, what you had in your hands. Because I figured <laughs> if she had tweezers, she's going to stab me. And then I then I went immediately to, I'm in a rush and I know I got to clean up. But I also know that after I clean, you clean. So I think I asked you, hey, I'll clean this. But if you're going to clean it, it'd be cool. And you gave me this look like, you better clean it. And I said, heard. And I started and cleaning it. Betty will eventually get it too. But so anyways, that happened. I mean, that was that was hilarious. Yeah, it's a lesson in sometimes you got to slow things down. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And, and I also asked you to take a picture. Did I? Yeah. I said, can I, Can you take a picture? You're like, why am I taking a picture? I said, because someday oh, there's going to be a great be story. My, it's got to be on my phone then. I don't know where it is. No, no. I gave you my phone to take a picture. It's on your phone. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. What am I going to talk about next? Personal growth. No. Defining success. Mm. Has your definition of success changed since we first met? Oh, my gosh. It's how probably you, How do you measure it now? <laughs> uh, now it's full expression of who I am at my authentic core. That's success. To the degree that I'm allowed, uh, the, to the degree that I can discover who I truly, truly, truly am and give myself permission or accept that and just be that, that's success. And that is the best version of me for everybody in my life. I, I remember Jim Rohn said this best once. He goes, instead of 50 50, because that's what like some people say, like, you show up and I'll show up and we'll meet in the middle. He goes, How about you make a commitment to me to be 100% focused on you? I'll make a commitment to you to be 100% focused on me. And then as I'm getting better, I will have more for you. And if you get better, you'll have more for me. Instead of us diluting our focus because we're trying to like calibrate in the middle. So my whole philosophy is, I wake up every day to strive to be the 10.0 version of myself. Like that person is, think about like the time you love me the most. I cleaned up, yeah. right? I, I lit some candles, no. you know? No, okay, no candles. No. Cleaned up, yeah. uh, told you you look beautiful, asked you about your day. Like all the best times Dan ever, like grab all of those, put it into one day. The yeah. way I cleaned up after myself the whole day. And then I was also like incredibly charismatic and abundant and, and just on, you know, brain was on. That's a 10.0 Dan. 
Okay. I've never done that in a day, nor could like, that's who I am today, but that's what I strive for. Mm -hmm. And as I'm doing that, as I'm learning stuff, I give, I, I teach that I give, I give myself, I literally strive to be the best version of myself and give myself to the world. That is my definition of success. I think to the degree that you can keep working in your life to, to design your life that way, that is winning. So like I've, I've success, like that's why it's funny because people use money or possessions as like a marker or something. I'm like, I don't think any of that actually is what it is. I think fulfillment is a byproduct of, of, of deciding to pursue that, right? That's the crusade. This is my North Star. I think I can be better. And I want to be better from me from yesterday. I'm not comparing myself to anybody else. And as I do that, I will share that with other people. And that feels really good. And if you can do that all day long, I think that's that's success. Yeah, sometimes you'll come home and I don't know what happened to you during the day. And you'll just say, it's a peanut. If we've lost it all, some say I did something and we lost this all. And we don't have a house. We have no cars. We don't have the fancy life that we have now. Would you still want to be with me? And what what do I say every time? As long as you didn't do anything wrong. I go, it depends what you <laughs> did. Yeah, it depends what you did. As long as you didn't do anything wrong and we're good. Because yeah, literally yeah. you say, hey, we're good, I'm good. And the reason I say that for people listening is because I'm calibrating myself because I don't ever want to make it about the stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay? Even though we fly private and we have a free supercar collection. Yeah, but we actually talked about this the other day that. about not growing connections to physical things i know like i don't want my possessions to possess me no and they don't i use them to to buy back time i use them to bless other people Mm -hmm. um but at the end of the day if those things weren't present guess what i would wake up tomorrow and do the same thing like Mm -hmm. i would pull out my phone and do a podcast with my wife i would go to the gym i would try to help people it'd be kind of a fun project yeah i mean i've I've thought of it several times like just like start back at zero and I got, I got to be careful. My, my ability to manifest is pretty strong, yeah. so I got to watch out well, what yeah, I say. Yeah, let's not do that. No, no, this um, is just... Uh, yeah. Okay, coming back to success, what do you think, based on what people ask you and also the advice you give others, what do you think makes us successful in our marriage? Well, we're willing to do the work. What's the work? The work, well, it's all caps, the work. It's, it's Whatever you think is the work is the work. So think about individually we do the work right you work on like hey i know that i'm overreacting here i go i know i can be a little bit much around this like individually we do the work um in our relationship what we call the sacred union we come together and we do the work as a as two people in this union um we do the work as parents for for max and noah i mean we like legit have parent coaches and family coaches and like we have all the coaches yeah we like do the work and i just think like some people in a relationship won't even read a book together about a thing that can make their marriage better right like some people have never even thought about individually going to therapy to deal with their own trauma let alone go like don't wait till it's bad actually this is what's interesting about coaching or therapy is why don't you go to be better Mm -hmm. why wait till it's bad that part always messes me up it's it's like it, it consumes their time. And I know resources. they're not willing to spend the money or the time. But like I said, I look at my calendar and I look at my bank account. And if I tell myself these things are important to me and I can see no proof that I invested in it dollar wise or that it's in my calendar, then is it really important to me? Or it's just me play, paying lip service to what I think everybody should say, but it's not backed by action. Can you tell based on like some of the, we'll say gentlemen that you give uh, partnership and, and marriage advice to can you tell the people that are doing the work? What's the big thing that stands out? There's, I mean, the, the cool thing about the people that usually end up in my world is they're, they're people on a journey of personal development. What, I, what happens, though, is a lot of them will say something like, you know, I'm doing all this stuff, and I'm here in your program, and I'm doing this, and my life's getting better, and yet, you know, my wife gives me a hard time. <laughs> and Or she doesn't support me, right? And... What I always rebut to them is nobody has to change for you to win. Mm. Don't blame your wife. Like, Peanut, I love you. If you were still the same Peanut that I fell in love with at the, at the beginning, I would still strive to win, and I would never blame you for not. Mm. And that is a tough pill for a lot of people to swallow. Because they'll go, well, isn't it easier? Yeah, it's easier. So what? It's easier. That it's, it's cool that I was born in Canada. That's that's cool, too. I have free – like, you know what I mean? Like – there's things in life that make things easier. They're not required to win. 
And when you realize that, then it gives me 100% control over my life. And that's why I always say, like, you got to go. If you if you feel that it's them, go be the best version of you. Go, go be an incredible provider. Like, some men don't even step up to say, like, hey, man, you're not providing for your family. And you're creating challenges for them. That's just not cool because you're being lazy. You're not being focused. Mm -hmm. You're easily distracted. You keep going to business with people that are you know are wrong, mm -hmm. right? So, I don't know. I'm just... I see them doing the work, but I also see them using their family as an excuse to not win. And I'm like, why don't you use them as the reason to win? Yes. Like, that's crazy. Like, a guy said that to me on the hike this morning. He's like, you know, I would do that, but I've got three young kids. And I'm like, no, that's why you should do it. That's why you should freaking drop the 40 pounds and get your crap together and, and make more money and do all that stuff because you do have a young family and you are an example of what it looks like to do hard things. And if you're going to decide to default to your Netflix and your weekend chilling out doing nothing, mm. you're teaching them. Whether you want it or not, people are like, monkey see, monkey do. It's caught, not taught, Yeah, as you say. Our kids are examples. I mean, they've been coming CrossFit when they were in, in oh, uh, care. Car like, yeah, yeah, car seats. Since they were like one, they've been coming in CrossFit. They go and watch you at your Ironmans. That's weird. It was on Do Not Disturb. That's all right. That person clearly needed it's to Marcel. Check. Oh. <laughs> it's probably because he's in my VIP list. Oh. Um, okay. So you have, so you're not an overnight success. Some people are like, where did this damn Marcel no, come from? No, 27 years in the making. At least, but like, 14, no, not at least. 14 well, I guess, years yeah. ago when you and I started dating, yeah. it was interesting. We met, you lived in a three bedroom apartment in San Francisco, had roommates, didn't have a car. It's like, not that you couldn't afford the other things because you had sold a company. <laughs> no, I could afford it. I, you thought I was poor. I, for the longest time. Which I loved because that 100% people might think you like are with me for whatever the money stuff. And I'm like, oh no, Renee thought I was a poor startup <laughs> kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, yeah, no, I mean, if anything, I, I hope I'm just proof of like heads down one foot in front of the other and being honest about your performance. Like I just, every year I try to just be a little bit better. So with your career, we'll call it, you have reached and spoken on some of the largest stages in the world now, Tony Robbins, John Maxwell, others. Yeah. It's kind of like to a lot of people, this is like the peak and you say i'm just getting started 100 percent. how do you keep pushing forward what is the the north star for you because it's not about me mm. see i think people that want those things they do it because of what it's gonna tell them about them and they do it from a place of like not enoughness or you know i don't feel worthy so i'm gonna do that so i can finally tell myself i'm good enough or you know i need this person to approve of you know, have me on their podcast or whatever. Like people keep asking me, like, when are you gonna go on this person's podcast, that person's podcast? Here's here's the way I look at it. I'm I wake up every day to just try to be me mm -hmm. and just be honest with myself. Not and like not be rude, but be honest, be not be uh brass or crass, but be direct. Like, you know, also show up with the biggest heart in the world, mm -hmm. like the biggest heart. And what's interesting is I think the niche, the ultimate niche is just being you. I just believe that. And if anything, when I sit down with, you know, Sam and the media team, I get frustrated with us not doing more of what who I am. Mm. Like and 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 an example is just like the amount of work I do with troubled youth is not present on the internet. Like I I was in Miami and I went and visited two juvenile detention centers in Miami. That's part of my life. But yet it's not in our content, it's not part of the the stuff that I, you know, I go speak at all the recovery centers in town. I got a full tie here. I know tie told full, me today. Yeah, that's yeah. like full time person dedicated to grabbing Dan, fighting with Ann in his calendar to get me in front of <laughs> yeah. groups of troubled youth, because that's my real passion. So like, mm. I don't like the what's possible to me. It it's not about striving to do that, so I can feel good about myself. It's really just being honest about am I being truly like i think everybody's here to do something incredible with their life i i truly believe that i don't care who you are and it, it could be just be the best mom in the world it could be be the best teacher in the world it could be whatever for that community and i just believe that i went through what i went through to serve and help other people and i 
I just consider that success. And if that comes with the invites to speak on a Tony Robbins stage, awesome. But if it didn't, awesome. You know what I mean? There are people going through crazy challenges now and mothers, we'll say a lot of female listeners that are probably struggling between growing their business and being a good mother and a good partner. How can they, what's the mindset shift they need to be able to know that this is going to become a gift to them someday? Well, first off, I want them to understand that if they're having a hard time with this because they're not good enough. Yet. That doesn't help. <laughs> I know, but I'm going to, because this is, on, this is just honest. Like okay. this is just, this is who I am. I, I, this is what I had to tell myself. If I'm not winning, it's because I don't know how to win yet. Comma yet. Put the yet. Mm. I'm not good enough. I don't have the skill. I haven't done the work. I haven't decided. Just the decision. Like really deciding, no, I want to win in business and I want to be a great mother and I will learn how to buy back my time and be better at delegating and learning to let go and renegotiating my commitments with my mom and probably stop the vices. Like there's all these things that I think are on the other side of a decision to do it and the honesty it takes to say, I'm just not good yet. Mm. And, and from there, it's like I can work off of that. And the truth is, is how you move forward is you just got to ask yourself, did you come this far only to come this far? I always say, I need to become the person who can deal. Like, I remember one time we were running late for school drop off and morning was just a big hustle and bustle. And the kids were screaming and it was just like the worst. We were late. They were fighting each other in the back. They do that. And I sat there and I was breathing and I said, Renee, I need to become the person that can deal with this. And our spiritual therapist, Stephanie, said, you need to become the person where there could be a rave going on right next to you when you don't want it, and you're still at peace. Hold that center. To where you are. Yeah. And that's what I do. Become the person who can deal. Like, I got a letter from our wonderful CRA about some questions about an income statement from, like, 2017. Old Renee would have panicked. New Renee said, oh, just send this to the accountant. Have them deal with it. And it took two seconds. And I don't, didn't even sweat because I became the person that can deal with the stuff that would normally frustrate me. Yeah. Just I should l- probably learn how learn, to deal with bigger problems. I should probably learn about that when it comes to a clean kitchen and a clean sink. Like, I mean, so, so here's, again, this is how I help people with this is whatever, whoever you are today, try doing the opposite. So like, this is my invitation for you. I'm not saying you have to do it, but consider this. <laughs> what if you didn't touch the kitchen for a week? What if you just allowed the kitchen to be what it is and let us put the stuff away when we decide to because it's got too much and never go in the kitchen to clean it up? What would that, like, how would that transform you? Because again, I just know, I call it exposure therapy. Like, mm-hmm. I transform my body. How? Going all in. You know, like the cleanse, the workouts, the macros, like all in. All, you mean all out, not even doing anything? You is all out. For other people, it's all in. It's whatever they have a hard time doing is is just going and trying out the opposite to just see what would happen and live the feelings. I need to set those expectations. So our friend Kira Marie, Taki Moore's wife, we're going to be with them in Australia for Christmas. Yeah. And her and I were chatting a month ago, planning for this trip. And she, I said, I don't want to impose. Like, I don't even know the conversation that you guys had, but we're going to be there. Is it cool? She said, absolutely. I love Christmas. I can't wait. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not the person that cleans my kitchen three times in a day. It might be clean one day. It might not be. I need you to know that. She said that? Yep. I love her. And I said, okay, noted. And I'm like, well, I want to do that too. Because she's like, I am optimizing for quality time with my friends and family, not for a clean house. She just managed the expectations. She, yeah, she's good. She's but we do that when people come over to our house. We're like, hey, I you know. can stay at our house, but you're on your own schedule. We've already got things committed. Yeah. If we happen to like get together for a dinner, cool. If not, like go go on your way. I know. We're we're great hosts. <laughs> I think that's a great host. <laughs> we're great. Yeah. Um, okay, I wanna I wanna come full circle on like advice for partners. What advice would you give to other entrepreneurs? about maintaining strong relationships with their partners while also pursuing big goals. Yeah, I mean, the the one of the biggest competitive advantage you could have as an entrepreneur is a partner that's on the same page. I think sometimes people 
fear that if their partner knew how big they were thinking or playing, that they would either be scared or and they just don't share. And I've just always been very public with you and with everybody in my life. This is what I'm going to create. This is what I want to create. This is how it's going to look. I don't need anything from anybody. Like I, like several times I'm like, here's the life. And you're like, I, I'd be happy with just a little home. And I'm like, cool. I will. Do you want, I'll buy that home for you. <laughs> we had that conversation. Yeah. Like I'll literally yeah. buy you that home and you could, we can stay there too, <laughs> but I will also have other homes and you can stay there too. But if that's the, that's just the life you want, we can have like, I, I want to let you be you and I'm going to go be me, but I'm also going to share that with you. I mean, when we started doing visioning board at the end of the year together, that was, that was awesome. Yeah. Right. Cause then you'd be like, Hey Dan, look at that. And I'm like, Ooh, you know, cause yeah. the top nice left butt. corner. Yeah. Nice yeah. But I was like, wow, that's, <laughs> that's fun. Um, and I just think that's, that's important is to understand like nobody needs to change for you to win. However, I think people need to communicate their desires and goals so that if there's an opportunity to support them, like my favorite thing to do in the world is help you. Like my favorite thing, like my, your love language is uh, quality time together. Mine is- No, it's not. Okay, you get it this used wrong. to be. It used I know, to be. it used to be, it changed on me. Yes, it's acts of service. Which messes me up now as a buy back your time guy. I understand the irony and words of all. affirmation. No. Yeah, words of affirmation. Mine is uh, physical touch. Yep. Duh. And then also- Words of affirmation. Yeah, words of affirmation. But for you, it's like, I want to help you. Yeah. Like, I love that. I know. Yeah, I got to be careful how much I help you because I can, like, rocket ship things. Let's do it. No, do you, no. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Sam's listening. <laughs> yeah, I have to tell Sam everything. He, yeah. Okay, so one of the things that I think it's, like, Warren Buffett and other people at that level have said before that some of the biggest, the most success that they were able to achieve in their life was who they chose to do life with. Oh, it's in Think and Grow Rich. I mean, Napoleon Hill talks yep. about this. It's a, the number one decision. That's crazy. Number one decision. Yeah, you can you can have an anchor around your neck if you choose to be with the wrong person. Like oh. some people, had I chosen the wrong, I mean, for sure, my life would not look like, I'm not saying you couldn't win. It's just the size of how big you can win. Yeah. But yeah. also you want to enjoy that, the success. I know, but so somebody. there's so much mind gunk that most people have around anything. Like most people have money beliefs that, I mean, Peanut, like, you're so frugal, it's hilarious. No, I'm not. Well, you're getting better at it, but you know what I mean? I've and always the, been that way. I know, which which is great, I guess, but at the same time, yeah. like, you're, I'm seeing you finally, like, allow yourself yeah. to live and stay in nice places and buy yourself some stuff. And I'm, yeah. and you're like, I'm taking your Urus. I'm like, <laughs> it's yours. Like, I drove it all the yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what happened to my car? Yeah. But I love it. Yeah. So what do women do? Because our listeners are mostly women. If they're with somebody who is just comfortable where they're at and they're just... For the women with the man that's comfortable where he's at, yeah. go kick them. Kick them. What do they say? Like, kick them. Say, hey, enough's enough. Step up. Like Share goals. I expect more from you. No, like, like legit, tell them. Yeah. Hey, in the grand scheme of things, you got to stop comparing yourself to your buddies because they're not impressive. Mm -hmm. You're not the person that I thought I was getting in a relationship with. I think you know that you're capable of more. I'm here to support the heck out of you, but enough's enough. And you can start going to the gym. Yeah. I I would be 100% okay when I was, you know, fat Dan and, you know, I mean, how many times you come in? People don't know this, but like you used to come into the bedroom and I'd be laying in bed when I should be running my company, mm -hmm. watching TV. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh no, another one of those. And I'm like, ugh. All right. And like you sometimes it'd be like multiple days. And then eventually you're like, okay, enough. Yep. Enough with the chips, enough with yeah. the, the sobbing, enough with the whatever. And you would get so sick like three times oh a year. Oh my gosh. You I haven't been sick in forever. For like five days. I know. And and you were there was a nurturing part of you, but also like I don't mind and you don't do this, and I'd be okay if you did more of it. It's just like, no, Dan, I expect more from you. Can I do that? Yeah, you have lately and I love it. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, you literally told me go get a bigger plane, I and I just got off a call <laughs> with the jet. You're like, as it came out, I'm like working on that bigger jet for you, and you're like, that's hilarious. I'm like, no, I'm, I did, I, and and it's weird. If, I don't want to sound pretentious saying this, but the opportunities to be able to bring 
more people with us, like friends and family to go to hey, places. You tell me what you want. If you that's desire me. it, I will go acquire it for you. I just believe that's, that's my job. Yep. And sometimes I'll say, okay, Dan, it's time to go to work. I, there's something that I want and you'll go and you'll work for a month and then your revenues go up and then it's like, okay, here's the thing that I want. Whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Usually I ask at the end of a show, what does it mean to be a wild woman? Maybe let's, let's turn the tables. How do you think I'm a wild woman? I mean, <laughs> the dance you did the other night is probably <laughs> like, and I don't know if we can put this in the video or you went downstairs and you were like the bye, bye, bye from Deadpool. In sinks. In sinks. Yeah. What song was it called? Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. I don't know what got into you, but you're like, I'm going to learn this dance. And I was upstairs reading and I could hear your little, <laughs> your little squeaky, ta your tap. And I was like, what is she doing? And then I went on Instagram and I saw your story and I was like, that's what I'm hearing is her doing yeah. her little step yeah. stuff. Um, that's a wild woman. I think, I think the most beautiful thing is a woman connected to her femininity. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. It is awesome. It's powerful. It's nurturing. It's like a woman that is comfortable 100% in herself mm -hmm. is so freaking attractive. That's, yeah. that's a wild woman. All right. Well, Dan, you have some really cool things that you're offering to the world beyond business coaching. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what it is that you're doing. Yeah, I mean, everybody should go get a copy of my book, Buy Back Your Time. It is the book. It's the Bible. It'll help everybody. It doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur or not. It is my best work so far. I'm working on a new book that's coming up for software CEOs and then another leadership one. But I would just encourage everybody to go follow me on Instagram. Like I'm, I'm assuming if they're they know you, they probably go and creep on me because that's what like people do. Well, actually, like, link they? to you in my bio. Oh, that's how that you makes got it easy. So famous. Okay, that's why my <laughs> Instagram followers grew. Yeah. So uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram. Message me if I can be helpful. And um, my YouTube. We put a lot of work in uh, trying to teach the world and help people build companies that don't grow to hate. So that's my uh, my North Star. Love it. Thanks for joining us. Today. I love you. You're so great at this. It was awesome. You. So fun.